So I'm gonna solo this channel and look what's gonna happen when I'm gonna select another channel. The solo will be applied to that new selected channel. And same if I'm using the arrow keys, the up and down arrow keys on my keyboard, it's gonna solo the selected channel. Hey, what's going on? Chris Salim here from Mixed Down Online. Hope you're good, hope you're well. Now, before we jump in and I start answering all of those Cubase questions, I have a free gift for you. If you like the way my Cubase looks like as far as the colors goes, you can download 100% free my own Cubase color set so you can apply it in your Cubase sessions. So if you want your Cubase sessions to look like mine, just click the link down below and download that free color set Cubase project. Okay, so now let's start this one up. Now, some of the questions I'm gonna answer today are in relation to one of my last videos regarding render in place. So let's start with question number one. Hello, Chris. When I render in place in a contact VSTI, I end up with several extra empty tracks. Why does this happen? All right, so let's check this out. I have a contact VSTI loaded right now. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select my uh, MIDI performance to render in place. Now, what is happening right now and the reason why you're getting a bunch of different uh, empty tracks like I'm gonna do right now, let's try it out. So I have some audio that was rendered on the first channel and all those other extra channels are empty. And the reason why that happens is very simple. I'm gonna open the right zone of the project window, go to VSTI, and this is my contact instruments. If I click on that small arrow aiming down, I'm gonna have access to the input and outputs option. And probably what's gonna happen here is if I click on activate outputs, I have all of the outputs of the VST instrument activated. So that's why uh, you you're getting all of those empty tracks because render in place is going to export all the outputs available even if there's nothing going to them okay so that's why you're getting that and that applies not only to contact uh, virtual instruments but to any virtual instruments that supports several outputs so if you want to avoid this you need to go under the vsti tab on the right zone click on that small arrow beside your virtual instrument, activate outputs and just uh, deactivate all of those extra outputs that are you know, not useful in your case. And this way, if I do this one more time, you're gonna end up with only one stereo channel. That's it. So I hope that helps. Now to question number two. Do you know when rendering a VST instrument MIDI event into audio, the automation of the VST track would be reflected in that rendered audio event? Let's check this out. I have a chord progression in MIDI using Retrolog. Um, in, in this MIDI performance, I also have MIDI CC automation and volume automation on the VST channel itself. So when you render in place that MIDI event, what's gonna happen is very simple. First of all, all MIDI CC automation will be rendered with the audio itself and the um, track, the channel automation, that will depend on the way you are gonna render your, uh, your events. So let's have a quick listen to what I have here. So I have MIDI CC automation for the filter of the uh, Retrolog instrument, and I also have a uh, volume automation on the channel. So let's render this up. So if I keep the processing dry, um, like I said, with all those processing options, all MIDI CC automation will be rendered with the audio. But if I keep that to dry, the uh, channel automation, all automation part of the VST channel um, now will be printed or will be added to the new channel, the new audio channels. Now for channel automation, what's gonna happen if I keep it to uh, the processing to dry, uh, the automation will be added to the new audio channel. If I want the channel automation to be rendered with the uh, uh, with the audio, I need just to select channel settings or you know complete signal path depending on what you want. But starting at channel settings, that will print uh, rendered with the audio all channel automation. So I'm gonna keep that to dry and render this one out. So if I look at the uh, the new audio channel that I have and I click on show and hide automation, I'm gonna see my uh, volume automation right here. Okay, so I uh, it actually kept the uh, volume automation that I had originally on the v, uh, virtual instrument channel. And uh, let's have a quick listen.
Okay, same result as I had before. So the MIDI CC automation for just to change the filter uh, was applied and bounced uh, with the audio and the automation of the channel uh, was added separately. So this is when the processing is set up to dry. So I hope that helps. Now to question number three. Is there a way to use a solo mute feature in Cubase that allows you to quickly jump back and forth between tracks like an audition feature without having to click solo on and off for each track? Yes, there's an option. So um, the way you're set up right now, if you solo a track and you just select another channel, Okay, whether you're using the arrow keys on your keyboard or you just click on the channel, it's not going to solo that selected channel, okay, but the original channel will stay uh, soloed. So what you need to do if you want to change that around, you need to go up to edit down to preferences and under edit on top, you will see project and mix console. And there's an option called enable solo on selected track, which is very cool. So I'm going to click on OK. And this, I'm going to solo this channel and look what's going to happen when I'm going to select another channel. The solo will be applied to that new selected channel. And same if I'm using the arrow keys, the up and down arrow keys on my keyboard, it's going to solo the selected channel. Very cool. So again, you just need to go on top under edit, go down to preferences and look for project and mix console. And you will see that feature that needs to be checked on. And there's also the feature of enabling a record when selected an audio track that is actually pretty cool. And that will basically do the same, but with the uh, record enabled feature. So every time you select a channel that has an input uh, uh, routed into, you will see that uh, record enabled uh, active right away. Okay, so this can be practical for some. So again, that feature can be found in the Cubase preferences under project and mix console. Now to question number four. Hi, Chris, I see on your channels that some of your knobs are purple. How do you change the color of the channel knobs? Very simple. Let's go back to the uh, Cubase preferences window. And this time around, we will go down under uh, user interface and you will look for mix console fader colors. And this is where you'll be able to change all the fader colors. Now, those will work with types of channels. Okay, so for example, the sampler channel uh, can have its own fader color. Uh, same for group channels, instrument channels, MIDI channels, audio input outputs and so on, you know. So those are the types of channels where you have a bit more control over the color of the fader itself, uh, which can be very useful. And so I actually customized that to my taste and some of those I just left at the default color. So this is up to you, but this is where you can change that. And you can also go down to the mix console rack colors where you can customize the color of uh, the EQ. Um, you know, pre-filters and so on, you know, the cues and all those different sections of uh, Cubase that we have on the project window and also on the mix console, which is actually very cool. And for the last question, is there a fast way to copy paste a plugin chain from one channel to another in Cubase? Yes, for sure. Let's check this out. So I, I like to do this within the uh, mix console. Um, now, there's several ways you can do this, you know, so if, uh, uh, for example, I going to enlarge my channels here uh, you can let's say I want to copy that uh, uh, snare chain you know but plug-in chain I can actually save that you know that is the long way to do it to save your effects at chain preset you name that and you can just reload that by clicking the select preset on the channel where you want to copy those uh, uh, that plugin chain and you load that effects chain preset so that is one way to do it but the very super fast way to do it which is way more practical is just to drag and drop that whole uh, plugin chain so by clicking on insert on top you will see that hand icon icon appearing you just click and you drag that to the selected channel where you want to where you want to paste that uh, that chain and that's it you know all those plugins will be copied as is on that other channel I can also do the same thing uh, with the sans effects also so if I want to copy for example all of the sans from this uh, uh, this channel to another channel I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to click on send this time and drag that over to the channel of my choice. Something else that can be done is to copy the full uh, channel settings on another channel. So the sends, the, the channel strip, uh, the inserts, I can do so in a very simple way by just going down on uh, the name of the channel and do the same. Just uh, drag that to the, uh, the channel of your choice and that's it. 
the full channel has been copied over. So the sends, the strips, the EQ, the insert plugins. So there you go, my friend. I hope that was helpful. If so, don't forget to share and to like and to subscribe to this channel if you're not already. You can also leave your comments and also your Cubase or uh, mixing production related questions right in the comment section below. Until next time, take care and see you.